All right, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to day one of the winter term. Uh, we're back in our official kind of floor here. I know we are across the street uh, at our main campus, but this is really, this is the home of the secondary program. And so it's a little, it's a little kind of cozier. Uh, it's kind of our own space. And so hopefully you will enjoy it here. Um, has anyone actually been to this campus before? You have, yeah? Yeah, yeah. it's a nice to be back. No, I started from in Canada. Oh, you started over there? No, I stopped over here, but I prefer the main one. Oh, you prefer the main one? Yeah, because you know, it's easier to get to it compared to here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true enough. That's true enough. Yeah, I kind of, we, we've, we've been, we've had this uh, floor for three years or so, or maybe four. And so I kind of, uh, I kind of, <clears throat> it kind of felt at home for me before, and I missed it when we closed. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're back anyway. Um, right. So before we talk about history stuff, I'll just kind of let you know what's going on here on the screen. So um, because we're doing this class in person, and because some people are sometimes in other countries, sometimes they're at home because they're sick or they've been exposed to COVID or whatever. I'm also streaming it online on YouTube, okay? So what you see on the screen behind you here is what people at home can see and what they can hear. Uh, so they cannot, they cannot see you, so you don't have to worry about broadcasting yourselves to the entire universe, although, who am I kidding? Nobody's watching my channel anyway. Um, but also when you, if you ask questions or if you give answers, it, people probably can't hear you either. And so, you know, if, if Ben answered a question or, or, or said something, you know, I would probably paraphrase it and communicate it to the home audience so that everybody can hear. Okay. So you guys don't have to worry about, you know, broadcasting yourself to the universe. Only I will do that. Uh, and you can sort of say what you want and you don't have to worry about being on camera because as you can tell, there's a lot of hair and makeup that goes into being on camera every day. So um, so that's kind of how that works. Um, so whatever, whatever you see on the screen is what people can see at home, okay? Um, so, okay, so let's kind of jump in. So this is History 12. Um, my name's Mike Metcalf. I've been an instructor here for about, what's it been now? Six and a half years, I think. Um, six and a half years. Um, I, I really enjoy teaching here. I really enjoy working here. Um, it's, a, it, it's a really great place to work and I, I've never gone to school here, but I think it's a, <laughs> I think it's a great place to go to school too. Um, I teach this, I teach social justice, I teach comparative cultures uh, sometimes, uh, and sometimes I also do first year anthropology, which I'm also doing this term. So I do a few different things. Um, but of course, this is history 12. And so Ben and I were talking before the class started, and this is really, I think this is really interesting. And, and what I, what I said to Ben, what I said to Ben was, um, if you asked me five years ago, I would have said, you know, do we really need to have this history course? Like, you know, we're talking about stuff that happened a hundred years ago. Does anyone care? Is it important anymore? Don't we have other things to talk about? Why are we doing this? But in the past, like maybe year or two years, I feel like this class has become way more relevant than it was before, right? And, and I feel like, you know, we're looking around the world and we're seeing, you know, global pandemics. We're seeing the rise of fascist parties. We're seeing attempts to overthrow democracy. We're seeing China kind of become a big kind of powerful country and it's flexing its muscles to other countries. We see Russia doing the same thing. And all of those things have kind of happened before in the 20th century. And so, again, you know, five years ago, I would have said, 
eh, maybe this isn't the most important class. But now I feel like a lot of the things that either happened before or kind of had their origin stories a hundred years ago have now become very, very important to how the world is working and what threats you know we're, we're facing now. So I think this is a super relevant class. And again, much more so than I would have thought before. Um, so what we'll kind of be looking at here is, is a period of history in which a lot happens. And I, sorry, Ben, I kind of, you know, I, I gave you my whole spiel before we started, but like, I don't think there's a hundred year period that you could find in history where so much changed. Right in terms of people's, in, ter in terms of people how how people live their lives, uh, how they saw the world, um, technology radically changed. Right, so somebody born a hundred years ago might have told you that oh, you know, when I was born, my parents were just getting electricity put into our house. Right, which would have been very possible. Now we have. You know, billionaires flying to the moon and artificial intelligence and little mobile devices that know all of the information in the universe kind of thing. That's insane, right? A hundred years to get from, you know, a horse cart to a spaceship. It's an insane amount of change, right? We had multiple global wars. We had genocides. We had pandemics. We had cold wars. We had entirely new political systems created. Insane. There's almost so much in this hundred years that we can't, well, we can't fit it all in, right? We're going to miss things. Um, yeah, it's a really, like, I think it's a really exciting time. There's just so much happening. And the things that happen are big, significant, consequential things, right? I know Jeff Bezos went into space this year. I doubt anyone will care about that in 100 years. <laughs> I, people don't really care about it much now. But <clears throat> so much happened in this period that is big, right? Big, big, big stuff happens. And so we'll try to, we'll try to talk about those things, right? And we'll try to you know, understand them for what they were and understand you know, how people might have felt about, you know, hearing a radio for the first time, right? Or realizing that their country is going to war, right? Or realizing that, you know, they're under the threat of nuclear weapons, right? And that their entire planet could be destroyed by the other side if they weren't careful, right? These are huge, huge things. And yeah, I think they're very interesting and kind of worth talking about. Um, The approach I like to take in a class like this is not kind of a names and dates and memorization kind of thing. Um, we have Siri. We have Siri for that now. Um, if I want to know, if I want to know any little piece of information, I can just ask Siri and she will tell me. Um, what we're going to try and do in this class more is kind of understand the story, right? And so history, if anything, is a story, right? It's a story that we tell ourselves about what happened in the past and what it means, right? So it's not really about names or dates. It's more about, it's more about story, right? And the story is important because the story that you believe has a lot to do with how you see the world, right? And the decisions that you make, right? If you, if you feel that you know, stories you've heard about government corruption and, you know, big pharma and, you know, conspiracy, if you feel those stories are true, then yes, you might be very hesitant to get a COVID vaccine, right? People, people are actively resisting these things because they believe stories that they've been told, right? And again, most of those stories are not true, unfortunately, but they believe them. And it has pretty real world effects. Right? Um, if you go to a place like North Korea, Kim Jong-un has told North Koreans a lot of stories about 
North Korea and what North Korea is like, what he's like, and he's told them a lot of stories about what the outside world is like as well, right? And if they believe them, and I'm not sure the degree to which they believe them, but if they do, that has a lot to do with how people live their lives in that country and in all countries, right? The stories we believe influence how we see the world and the decisions we make, right? And we'll see that, or we'll, we'll talk about the fact that history is, history is a story for, for that reason, right? Because stories have an audience and a purpose. And they also kind of have to be stories because we can't, we can't include everything, right? If I ask about, you know, the story of Mir's life, right? Well, Mir is 17, 18. Mir is 18 years old, right? The story of Mir's life includes everything that has happened to Mir in 18 years, which is a lot of things, right? We can't deal with 18 years of events. We need to kind of strip it down, right? And so if I gave Mir an assignment, I'm not going to, but if I gave you an assignment and said, in, in one page, tell me the story of your life, you would have to choose things, right? You couldn't tell me everything, right? You'd have to just tell me the important points, right? The big, the big important events that happened to you. And history's like that as well. We can't, we can't do the entire history of World War II, right? There's millions of people involved, four years at least. You can't do it. You have to start choosing what's important and what's not. And again, the things that you choose and the way that you put those things together into a story has a lot to do with what people think, right? And this is, um, this is the job of academics, right? This is the job of historians who write history. But it's also, you know, it, it's something that people do all the time, right? We here at Columbia College, we tell a story about Columbia College to ourselves, right? What we've, what the college has been through, what we stand for, what we're trying to do, right? That's a story we tell ourselves because it helps point us in the, hopefully, point us in the right direction to the future, right? You all tell yourselves stories about who you are as well, right? You look at your past, you know what's happened to you, you know where you come from, and that story teaches you about who you are, right? And where you're kind of, which direction you're kind of pointing yourself in. Countries do it all the time, right? Countries do the same thing. Canada, we have a story, right? Where, how Canada was created, where it comes from, who we are, right? And that kind of keeps us, hopefully, pointed in the right direction. Right? And so all of these little histories, whether they're the story of Canada or the story of the 20th century or the story of Mir, soon coming to Netflix, um, whatever story you're looking at, it's one that is kind of assembled from selected pieces, right? Selected events. And it's meant to communicate a certain meaning, right? It's meant to get you to kind of look at things a particular way, right? And, and again, that's important because sometimes those stories help us to understand things better, but sometimes they don't, right? Sometimes authoritarians, right, dictators, Donald Trumps of the world, they will try to tell you another story, right? They'll tell you a story that benefits them, not you, but them. And so we kind of need we need to understand our history, but we also need to understand how stories are created, right? Maybe you've heard in the, in the media, people talk about controlling the narrative, right? Controlling the narrative is exactly that. Who's telling the story, right? Who gets to tell the official story of what's happening? Is it Donald Trump? Is it the media? Is it someone else? Is it scientists? Whoever has control of that narrative is the one who has power, right? And again, leaders, good and bad leaders, they know this, right? So part of understanding history is not just understanding what happened in the past and how it relates to the future, but it's about understanding 
power, right, and control, because stories have stories have immense power. So, what we'll be doing? I'm going to jump ahead here. Uh, okay, pause. Um, in this class, we will be um, we'll have a textbook for this class. Um, if you are happen to be online, I have scans of the pages, but I'll get you um, I'll get you this textbook from you can borrow it from the school here. We, we may use this one too. I just got this one today, and it's kind of a workbook kind of thing. Um, this is the only copy I have, but I'm going to look at it and see. I don't know. Maybe it'll be useful. Maybe not. I don't know. I still I literally just opened it an hour ago, so. You may see it again, or you may never see it again, but I, I'm going to look at it. Um, but either way, I'll, I'll get the textbook for you. Uh, oh, it looks like this. Ta-da. Um, for any other things we do in here, I'll post for you. So whether it's an article, uh, if it's a video, I'll post links to it, probably in Microsoft Teams. Um, of course, the live streams from this class will be uploaded to YouTube. Um, and my lecture slides I will put into Microsoft Teams as well. So you'll have, you'll have a record of everything that happens in here. You, it'll be literally impossible to miss anything. Um, yeah, I, I'll provide everything to you. This is what I was going to say. We, <clears throat> we have some learning outcomes in this class. There's seven of them. And I, I don't want to go into them too deeply, but what they are is exactly what I was talking about. Learning to understand story through history and learning to think critically about it. Right? And so to ask questions about history, to understand how people assemble a historical narrative, right? why they choose certain people or events, why they leave certain events out. Um, how we can connect cause and effect, right? What things caused other things and what things did not, right? Um, continuity and change, right? How have things stayed the same from one time period to another and how have they changed, right? Um, perspective, how can we see, how can we see things differently by looking at it from a different angle? or by looking at it from someone else's experience. Okay. Um, and then finally, ethical judgments, right? How can we make good decisions about what to do in a certain situation, right? One, we don't have to talk about this now, but one interesting debate I saw that's going on in Twitter right now in Canada is, should we deny health care to people who have COVID but didn't get vaccinated. If they go to the hospital and say, hey, I'm sick with COVID, should we send them home and say, you know what, you're on your own. We can't help you. Right? Because we are, because, because, the, because people who have COVID who are going to the hospital, they're pushing out other people, right? Other people who need surgery or chemotherapy, those people are being told, wait, we can't deal with you because we're dealing with all these COVID people. And so if some people choose not to get vaccinated, should we say to those people, look, you, you chose not to, go home and deal with it. We, can't, we cannot help you because it's not fair to those other people who need those other treatments, right? And again, that's an ethical judgment, right? Can we, can we or should we deny treatment to people who have made a choice not to protect themselves or others with a vaccine, right? And again, I'm not pushing one way or the other, but that's a ethical dilemma, right? That's one that people are arguing about. So we'll try to talk about ethical pieces in this class too, if we can. Um, there's some core competencies as well. You don't have to worry about them too much. Communication, we'll talk about. Thinking, we'll try to flesh out that critical thinking thing. And then there's a personal social competency as well. And kind of what that has to do is how we can kind of connect the things that we do in class to who we are as people. 
right? And, and how we think about ourselves, how we care for ourselves, and how we care for others, right? And um, again, since I was just talking about it, you know, vaccines and healthcare might be part of that, right? Is do we have a, you know, if I get, if I get a vaccine, which I did, I just got my booster on, what's the day, Tuesday? Thursday I got it. So I got my, my, my booster on Thursday. You know, it, sh should I get it for myself? Should I get it out of an obligation to the community, right? Does it, it protects me, but it also protects all of you, hopefully, right? What are my responsibilities to other people? right in a pandemic should I just worry about myself or do I have a responsibility to worry about everyone else as well right and again this is the little thing but we'll talk more about that um, this is kind of how the marks will break down there'll be some assignments um, I try to do I try to do different assignments I'm always trying to improve things where I can so I, I may use some of the same assignments I did last time I may make up new ones we'll see um, we'll have some quizzes which are we'll do them in class they're kind of very short written quizzes maybe five questions if you happen to be online because you are ill or you've been exposed or something we can do an oral quiz I'll video call you if you're well enough to do so either way we'll work it out um, there'll be a final assignment. Last term we did presentations, which I think kind of worked out. I think that worked out pretty well. Um, we might do it again, or if I think of something else, or if I get another suggestion, we can do something else as well. Um, and then there's a participation grade. Now, I used to, <clears throat> I, I used to just base this upon attendance, but Attendance this term is going to be weird because, you know, obviously I want you here every day, but if you think you have, if you think you're getting sick or if you have any COVID symptoms or if you know you've been exposed to someone who has COVID, then I don't want you here, right? Because the, the, our, our goal here is to try to make it through this term with as few people as possible getting COVID, right? And that's going to be a struggle. This Omicron thing is spreading very easily. It's going to be very difficult. And so we're going to have to work as hard as we can to be here as much as we can. But if we're not feeling well, or if there's a reason that we shouldn't be here, then we can't come in, right? And that includes me, because we have to make sure that we don't spread it to everyone else. And so you know, I, I will track your attendance because I have to, but I also know that people may be in here and then, you know, Ben's friend might get COVID and Ben might think, okay, I'm going to stay home for a few days just to make sure, right? And so Ben might be at home for a few days and online, then he'll be back. And so people may kind of move in and out of this class. And again, I hope not. I hope everybody stays well throughout the entire term and everyone's here every day. But if people start to move in and out, it, it's going to make the attendance weird, right? And so basically for participation, I'm, I'm just going to give you a grade based on, you know, are you participating, right? Are you here every day, either here or online? Are you engaged, right? Are you listening to what's going on? Are you trying to answer questions? Are you in the back watching a movie or gaming? Because I can tell. <laughs> But I've seen that. Um, so I'll, I'll just give you I'll, I'll give you a mark based on based on that. Uh, and I, you know, I, I used to calculate it out in a very complicated way. But to be honest, I I I can do it without that. I I, I know what I want to see, and if I don't see it, then I won't grade you as well. Um, yeah. So there'll be some assignments, some quizzes. There'll be a final. Thing, maybe a presentation, but no promises. Uh, and that's that's how we'll do it, okay? Um, this is kind of a, the older attendance policy. As I say, we're really just going to have to 
do our best here, right? So if you are not sick and you do not feel any symptoms, I really do want you to be here. If you are worried that you are sick or if somebody, you know, next to you has COVID, stay home, make sure you're well before you come back. <clears throat> I don't really like that, but nobody likes it. And we're just, we just need to do our best to keep everybody safe and to keep everybody well, right? Because if we all, if we all get COVID, it's going to be a disaster, right? So we just have to try and take care of ourselves and take care of each other and we'll make it through to the end, okay? So don't worry too much about this. Um, I'll deal with this later too. Um, in the syllabus, which is on Microsoft Teams, there's a classroom code of conduct. I won't go through it because you've all spent 12 years in school. You know how to behave, I'm not worried. Uh, you can drink in here, that's fine. You can eat in here as well, as long as it's not something like messy or stinky or anything like that. If you make a mess, please clean it up. Uh, but otherwise, I'm, I'm okay with that, because I know some, some people have classes back to back and there's no time to eat or drink, so yeah, no problem. Uh, email, check your email. The college and teachers may send you an email that with important information. Uh, the best way is just to get like um, get an email app to take care of it and I use Outlook or Spark both of them work well hook it up to your email and then you don't have to worry about logging in all the time that's a pain in the that's a pain in the butt right um, safety we'll have some drills from time to time a fire drill an earthquake drill this is an earthquake zone um, and a lockdown drill if somebody dangerous happens to get into the building um, the odds of these things happening are very, very low, but still, if anything happens, we need to know what to do, right? Uh, oh, okay. And the last thing I will do, just to kind of get us talking, uh, although Mir's been through this already this morning, so sorry, Mir. <laughs> but um, what I want you to do is, is um, I did this a while ago, and... and what I want you to do is, is talk to people around you. It can be in twos or threes, it's fine. Um, and what I'd like to know is the, the story of your name, okay? So how did you, where did your name come from? Why did your parents choose it? Or if you chose an English name when you came here, why did you, why did you choose that particular name? Um, yeah, what's the, what's the story of your name, okay? And so, uh, I'll, I have a story to my name. I'll tell it as well. Um, but yeah, just take a few minutes and talk to each other and just share the stories of your name just to get us talking. Okay? I'll just give you three minutes or so. Go for it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Yeah, I know they just 
Okay, so it sounds, sounds like we're done. And so, uh, Anna, I'm sorry, I know you're at home and, and it's kind of difficult to participate here, but we'll, we'll um, yeah, I know it's difficult. Um, anyone want to share where your name comes from? Okay, I can. Okay. My name's, yeah, my family is lazy, they just pick it from a random place, and I'm doing it because they picked up. They just, they picked it from a random place? Yeah, like, I don't know, random folks or websites or something. Okay. The, 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 the name Kenny or your, like, your birth name? No, Kenny. Yeah. yeah. They just kind of they just picked it, and, and they're like, it. here it is? Yeah, here it is. This is your name. Wow. When I saw it in the program, I was just like, yeah, great. Let's just call it. Okay, so you so you've been using that for quite some time then? Yes, around uh, more than ten years already. Oh, okay. So it feels pretty comfortable to use it. Yeah. I was I always wonder about because it, it seems particularly students from Southeast Asia will choose an English name to, to work on it. And I'm always curious how it feels to do that. Because I feel like if I moved to China, let's say, I, I think I would find it really weird to like choose a Chinese name and have people call me by that. Like I think that would, I think that would be really weird. And so I wonder if it's, is is it also weird for, you know, South Southeast Asian students to come here and be called another name? Is it weird? I don't know. No. I was born with my Okay. Okay, well then, yeah. yeah. Then that's pretty natural. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm always I'm always curious. Um, Ryan, what about you? Yeah. So, I was born with my name. Yeah. Um, my name is a whole name especially. It just sounded very really nice. Yeah. Based on what? Okay. Ryan Reynolds? No? I don't think so. It's kind of... He probably wasn't famous then. Yeah. Kind of someone from the older generation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Your, your grandmother picked it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting too, because often I think... Um, grandparents either pick the names or they get a say right they get to they get to influence right yeah, yeah. yeah. interesting interesting okay regina what about you yeah okay can you you can if you want to. So lots of, lots of, lots of meanings 
in those names, right? And it's interesting too because you know some people, <clears throat> yes, yeah, some people have names that are like, oh, it means this or it means that, and and then sometimes it's just like, oh yeah, I just like the sound of this name, so I'm choosing it, right? And so yeah, that's that's really interesting. Yeah, thanks. Uh, who? So Mir, what's the story of your name? It's my parents. My second name is uh, is really short and really Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> and that's true, right? Religion has a lot of influence over names as well, right? Lots of either from <clears throat> religious texts or from you know from the Bible, right? Or the names of saints. Yeah. Uh, and Ben, what about you? Okay. Yeah. But that's about it. Oh. <clears throat> that's interesting too, right? That's a little um Yeah, it's almost like a little bit of coaching, right? Like you're they they give you a name that you kind of hope to live up to or to sort of embody, right? And lots of names are like that too, right? They're personal characteristics. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, mine. I, I don't. I don't have a really good story about mine, but it was funny because I, the first time I did this little exercise, I was at a, uh, like a conference thing, and the presenter said, oh, "Okay, you know, here's what you do. It's an icebreaker kind of thing." <clears throat> Sorry, the first, the first day in class is always tough because I've like barely talked for a month, and now I have to talk for hours, and so my vocal cords are. <clears throat> are protesting they'll be okay by the end of the week um yeah so my my mother my name was chosen by my mom and as it turns out when my mom my mom is an older sister and so when my mom was about i don't know 13 or 14 or something her older sister was going out with this guy named named mike and um she my mom just thought this guy was like so dreamy he was just like oh and um, my mom's older sister went on to marry that guy. So that guy is actually my uncle now. But I guess she liked him so much that, you know, she, when I was born, she named me that. Which I kind of always knew and I didn't really think anything of until I went to this conference and I was telling the story of my name. And then I kind of had like a weird moment because I thought, well, Aren't sons normally named after their fathers? Like, so, yeah, I got a question. Yeah. Sorry. My real father is definitely my father. There's no. If you, if you saw the two of us, we don't need to do the DNA test. It's yeah. Good for you. But it's a good question. <clears throat> it's a good question. But yeah, I thought I thought it was kind of a weird I thought it was kind of a weird thing and maybe it is, I don't know. But <clears throat> I hadn't really thought of it until I told the story. And then I was like, oh, that's odd. But anyway, it worked out well. It's an okay name. <clears throat> Sorry, I just kind of swallowed coffee the wrong way. I do look like my dad, so there's no there's no questions of parentage there. <clears throat> okay, so again, on the first day, I don't. Oh man, <coughs> on the first day, as if my voice wasn't struggling already. On the first day, I don't really like to do too much. Um, sometimes people are kind of coming in and out of the class, and people are late to register, and so I don't like to do too much on the first day plus my vocal cords are a little tender and you know it's my first day back too so I don't want to strain myself right so I'll probably I'll end class here and tomorrow we will start officially um, I may get you a textbook tomorrow or maybe later this week we'll see um, yeah and, and we'll actually try to start some history tomorrow 
Uh, before we do that, though, does anyone have, do you guys have any questions for me about the course or about the college or about life in general or anything you want to ask? Because I'm here. You are literally paying me to answer all of your questions. You're not going to make me work for my money? Okay. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I'll end it there. I'm glad you're all here. And Anna, hopefully you'll be here with us shortly. Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, until then, I'll let you pack it up. Um, enjoy, enjoy your first day. And we'll see you here tomorrow. And we'll dig in, okay? Okay. That's it. That's it. See you tomorrow. Have a nice